everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss regarding the King's theory of goal attainment. And this is going to be the part 1 video in which I will be discussing regarding the introduction to the theorist and about the conceptual system. That is the main concepts which are included in the theory will be discussed in this video. So first, even before we go on to the theory, let us have an introduction to the theorist. So the full name of the theorist is Imogen M. King. So Imogen King was born on January 30th, 1923 in Iowa. So regarding her education, King was a person who was excellent from academics, like in the sense like her academic uh, events and then followed by becoming a great academician in the profession of nursing is something which should be thought of when you remember about Imogen M. King. Now, related to her education, she first completed her diploma in nursing from St. Louis, Missouri in 1945. Later, she did her bachelor's of science in nursing in 1948, followed by her master's again in the same university that is in St. Louis University in 1957 and then she acquired her doctoral degree from the prestigious Teachers College Columbia University in 1961. So we find that the profession of nursing, the I'm sorry, the education of the theorist is going to be like she started from her diploma took her BSc, next her MSc, next her doctorate. So that was the academic ladder what uh, uh, King uh, had in related to her education. Next, moving on to her career. Okay, she has worked as an associate professor uh, during the tenure of 1961 to 66. Again, from 66 to 68, she worked as an assistant chief of the research grants branch of the Division of Nursing in Washington, D.C., Later, she became the director of the Ohio State University from 1968 till 1972. Then she, her career is found to be like that. She worked as a professor from 1971 to 1980 at Loyola University in Chicago and also in University of South Florida's College of Nursing from 1980 to 1990. And then she retired with the title Professor Emeritus. So we again we find there is a step by step improvement like working as an associate professor, then as a director in a school of nursing, then later as professor and then getting retired as professor emeritus. In addition, even after her retirement, King was a person who was a very active member of the Florida Nurses Association, the American Nurses Association, and the Sigma Theta Tau International. She also was a fellow in American Academy of Nursing. So we understand how uh, inspired, uh, how much of inspiration we can take from Imogen King because step by step improvement both in education as well as in career and able to be active member of various prestigious associations even after her retirement is something the hallmark of Imogen King. Next coming on to her awards and honors she has a list of awards and honors okay like her book received the book of the year award in 1973 she also had additional honorary PhDs from Southern Illinois University and then she has got an award for excellence in education in 1989. She backed the gold medal from the Governor Childs for advancing the nursing profession in the state of Florida. 1998 again an honorary doctorate from Loyola University. 1999 she was inducted into the Teachers College Columbia University of Hall of Fame and she was inducted as a living legend in 2005 and she passed away on in December 24, uh, 2007. What a great life, like in the sense like her contribution to academics, her contribution to uh, the, especially to nursing students, okay. In fact, it is written that King was a person even after her retirement, she was in fact, uh, you know, like uh, she was in fact getting that satisfaction, looking into her nursing students, how they are developing and then what to say, looking at the future nurse leaders, she was a person who was highly satisfied seeing the development
development in a nursing profession so such great was uh, imogen king's uh, professional life and uh, so uh, if you are a student who is preparing for exam you just have to understand this much about the biography of the theorist that she started her education from diploma and she ended up with phd and honorary phds related to her professional career if you're going to see she started as an associate professor but then she ended up as professor emeritus and followed by being an active member so many awards so many honors including book of the year getting honorary doctorate degrees gold medals and so on so that was the inspirational life of the great nursing leader emerging m king now let's move on to uh, a glimpse of what is this goal attainment theory uh, her work if you're going to see her contribution of theory to the profession of nursing even now in many states in us they are following this particular goal attainment theory which is being used to formulate curriculums in uh, for nursing students okay her work is being taught to thousands of nursing students and it is implemented in various service settings and let me tell you king's theory is one of the most popular theory which is being widely researched upon you can find thousands of research studies being conducted based on emerging m king's theory so thus we can say that her theory had an enduring impact not only in nursing education but also in nursing research and nursing practice while she was serving as an active leader in professional nursing now what about this theory okay so now i understand that this theory has helped a lot of people not only in the field of education but also practice and research now coming on to the theory of goal attainment when was it first introduced it was first introduced in 1960 so you should remember the year it was first introduced in 1960 and what is the basic concept of the theory this is what it is it's very simple concept that is nurse and the patient are communicating information okay they are going to set the goals together that is the importance they set the goals together and then they take actions in order to achieve these goals see how simple the theory is both the nurse and the patient are going to communicate okay and they are exchanging the information and then both of them them together they are going to set mutually set goals and then they work together in order to achieve that goal that simple is king's goal attainment theory so according to king this is what she said is nursing she told that two sentences are there so even before we start with the concepts let us just have an overall view of what is king talking about nursing in the theory of goal attainment nursing according to king is a process of action reaction and interaction whereby nurse and client share information about their perception in nursing situation so a lot of things takes place in the while we give nursing care okay there is an action and for that the patient will show a reaction there is an action there is a reaction and then there is an interaction interaction is where we exchange information there is an interaction and whereby during this interaction the nurse and the patient are going to share information about their perception in the nursing situation so what king's theory is so beautiful is she tells that each of us have our own perception as a nurse i have a perception as a patient patient has a perception of certain things so we have to communicate with each other so that we share about the perception in nursing situation only when i understand certain things from the patient's point of view i will be able to give a better nursing care so that is the main 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 you know underlying concept that is the perception is very important you have to assess the perception of the patient that is what is spelled loudly in king's goal attainment theory again she continued nursing is a process of human interaction between nurse and the client whereby each perceives the other that is perception each perceives the other and the situation and then 
Understanding the perception of a patient, once you have understood that, through communication, they set goals, they are going to explore the means, and they agree on means to achieve the goals, and then they act together and the goal is attained. So, first point I told you, in King's theory of goal attainment, I told you that first what is happening, we are going to exchange information and then we are going to set a goal mutually. The nurse and the patient together agree and we are going to set a goal mutually and then we are going to work together to achieve that goal. Now I am going one step ahead and I am telling you, even before we exchange information, we have to understand the perception of each other. A nurse may have a perception of pain about the patient, but the patient also has a perception about that particular phenomena of pain. So it is very essential that even before I start with my intervention, I should clarify the perception of the pain for the patient, okay, both of us understand each other about the concept. We exchange information, we set a goal together, we work together how to achieve that goal and thereby the goal is attained. Simple, 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 just remember the word perception. Understanding the perception, mutually setting the goal, working together and attaining the goal. So, Next point we find, interpersonal relationship allows a person to grow. It allows a person to develop in order to attain certain life goals. I hope all of you will agree with this point. If we don't have any interpersonal relationship with each other, we will definitely not grow. Even a patient is going to get benefited when a nurse is interacting. A nurse is also getting benefited when she is interacting with the patient. Both of us are growing. Both of us are developing. It's something similar to what Peplo said. Peplo also said, shared a similar concept. I hope you remember that. Peplo also said that both of us are growing together into a mature personality. The same thing is what King says. King says the interpersonal relationship will help both the nurse and the patient to grow and to develop. So there are certain factors which affect the goal attainment which we will be studying in detail like role, stress, space and time. So that is about the introduction to the King's theory of goal attainment. So what have we studied? We just studied that King was a person who had a great educational background starting from diploma to doctorate. She had her career started as an associate professor, ended up as Professor Emeritus. We understand that she has received a lot of honorary awards and medals okay, for her great contribution, not only to nursing education, but to nursing practice and nursing research. Next, we study that her theory was introduced in 1960. It talks about how to achieve a goal. How to achieve a goal? The first step is understand the perception of each other, the nurse and the patient, and then come to a mutually set goal. Agree upon a goal. Agree on how to attain this goal and then start working together in order to achieve the set goal. That simple is goal attainment theory. Now coming on to King's conceptual system. This is that is, in this video, I will be discussing in detail about the various concepts which comes under the conceptual system. Okay, So, why this is important? For example, if you are a student, especially a postgraduate nursing student preparing for exam, okay, it is very important that you may, this question is very important. King's theory of goal attainment is very important for a PG student in India. Okay, usually among the various important theories, one important theory is King's theory. So, if, when, if you get a question on explain the various concepts according to the King's theory, this should be the answer what you are going to write. Okay, so what are the various concepts? King has made it very clear telling that there are three interacting systems. King assumed or King believed that a person is that one particular patient or even a nurse is we all of us are having three interacting systems. Okay, this was the picture given by King who said that there is something called as personal system, 
Next is the interpersonal system. And the third, you know, the outer thing is the social system. So it starts like this. The interpersonal system moving on to, I'm sorry, the personal system moving on to interpersonal, moving on to social system. So now what we are going to study is each of these systems, personal system, interpersonal system and social system. Each system has its own concepts. Okay. So now I understand that for personal system, there are a few concepts. Interpersonal, there are few. And social, there are few. Let us see one by one. So the first one is personal system. What are the various concepts according to personal system? Perception, self, growth and development, body image, space and time. Interpersonal system has various concepts which includes interaction, communication, transaction, role and stress. Social system has various concepts, organization, authority, power, status and decision making. So I understand that so many words are there in King's theory of goal attainment which I have to study. Yes, sure, you will have to study this because these are the various concepts in each system. So let's see one by one. The first one is personal system. Personal means what? Within me, right? Each of us are having our own personal system. Interpersonal means what? When I interact with somebody, I form an interpersonal system. What is a social system? When I interact with many people together in a group, you call that a social system. So that is the basic thing. So personal system, the focus of nursing in the personal system is the person. See, each one of us, we are having our own personal system, like a cup of tea, one cup. It is concerned with me. Within me, there are various concepts. So see how beautifully King has made it very clear. She is making points very clear, telling that every person whom we meet during hospitalization or while giving any patient care, you should understand that this person has a personal system. This person has a lot of things going on within him or within her. So it helps us to understand more about a person. I understand that so many things are there within a person. What are they? Number one, perception. Perception is something all of us have within ourselves. We all have our own perception like this figure. Each one of us we think okay hospital is something like this, nurse is someone like that, okay disease is something like this. Like each portion, each person trying to see a part of an elephant, all of us have our own perception. Okay so how does King define it? Perception is a process in which data obtained through senses and from memory are organized, interpreted and transformed. See, this may sound a bit difficult, but actually it is such an easy thing to understand and it is something very beautiful is there in the lines. You know what is perception? Perception is a process in which the data obtained through senses. Say for example, I have a very bad image about nurses. The reason may be, the reason may be the data obtained through senses. Say for example, someone is telling me that a nurse was so harsh to her during hospitalization. Somebody tells that the nurse has poor knowledge. She doesn't know anything regarding a particular medicine when she came to administer oral medications. These are the data which I hear through my senses. Senses can be not only hearing, it can be visualizing. We know what are the various senses. So the data obtained through the senses and the data obtained from memory. What if I went to a hospital for a, a, a health checkup and if a nurse was rude to me, then the data obtained from my memory, the data obtained from the senses are organized, interpreted and then transformed. So that forms my perception. Now the data which I got through the senses, the data which I have obtained through my memory are being organized. Now I am interpreting it and that forms my perception. Okay, so that is how. So each personal system, every patient whom we come across, they have their own perception. 
what are the characteristics of a perception for according to king it is universal it is not that only that particular patient all of us in this world we have our own perception of certain things it is universal so it is experienced by all but it is subjective what experience like both say two patients getting admitted in the hospital under the same nurse one may feel the nurse is kind the other will feel that the nurse is rude the reason is each one of us it is subjective perception is subjective okay like we know all of us we may not admire a particular teacher maybe some of us like her very much there are some of us don't like her very much the reason is perception is subjective or it is personal it is selective so it is subjective it is selective it is based on activity in the present that is based on available information so why that perception about the nurse was bad because that was the available information in the present from the senses from the memory that was the available information what if this particular patient got hospitalized was given care by a very empathetic by a very loving and a caring nurse the perception will change because the available information has widened and now the patient's perception will change so it is all of us we have our own perception only based on the available information i think i am making it clear see perception is such a wonderful thing that what we have to basically understand is perception is like uh, based on what what data i have based on the senses based on the memory the data is being organized and i'm interpreting it and that forms my perception i understand that this perception is going to be universal it is there for every one of us i understand that perception is subjective no two patients should feel the same about me need not feel the same about me because perception is subjective i also understand that perception is based on the available information so if the information is going to broaden if the information is going to widen the perception may change so king helps us to remind that a patient who is sitting in front of me okay he has his own perception so that is why king said analyze what is the perception of that person before giving care okay that is about perception next is self what is self according to king self is i'm sorry self is made up of those thoughts and feelings related to one's awareness of being a person separate from another influencing one's view of who she is and what she is see it's very simple let us not make it complex self is nothing but a feeling that awareness of being a person i am aware of my own self i know what are my needs i know what is my uh, problems what are the problems health problems i have it is that also every one of us have so king is that is why king says go for a mutual goal setting she never said nurse has to set the goal never she said mutually the goal should be set why because patient as a personal system has his own self he is aware about his needs he is aware about his problems okay so very simple self every human being has an awareness of one's own self unless and otherwise there is a mental health disturbance where there is there are certain psychiatric problems where a person is not aware of one's self okay so in that case it is not uh, it may not be acceptable next the third concept for personal system is growth and development what is growth and development growth is a change a change here in behavior not only in the cellular level but also in the molecular level in individuals so there is a change in behavior all of us every human being whom we take care they are undergoing their own growth and development there is a change either in the behavior maybe it is in a cellular level or in a molecular level and growth and development occurs in an orderly manner we know that it is an infant next it is a toddler preschooler school going it goes it is in an orderly manner it is predictable but has individual variation i hope all of us will admit with that see all of us we know that 
growth and development is universal we know that a baby should sit by 6 months maybe a baby should walk by 11 months or say 1 year but there are certain small small variations where it is not 6 months it may be 7 months it may be say 5 and a half months small small variations can take place in growth and development so what makes growth and development possible it is made up of genetic makeup life experiences that is important life experiences and by environment that supports movement towards maturity so a patient who is going to undergo a cardiac surgery okay i find that the patient is anxious but there are certain patients who are very calm and composed i find that the age of the patient is the same chronologically both of them are 60 years but one is highly anxious another one is very composed and calm i understand though both of them are at the same age group maybe their life experiences has made what i see in them maybe it is a genetic makeup or maybe it is a environment which has promoted them to be calm whereas an environment which has made a patient to be highly afraid and anxious about the surgery so again king reminds us that everybody human beings coming as patients they have their own growth and development which may have minor variations influenced by genetics and life experience and environment so it is a process where a person moves from a potential for achievement to actualization of self see that was the highest thing what king can ever tell okay first what do we have growth and development for in life we want to achieve but later on it is no more achievement it is self actualization okay like maslow's hierarchy so she has she has depended her words on hierarchy of needs where she said first it is only for achievement but later on this growth and development is helping a person to move towards self actualization so that is about growth and development king was also very particular to talk about body image of a patient she said body image is subjective body image is something very personal it is acquired or learned which i like it okay because body image is something which we learn when someone often comments at a particular patient you're so thin you're so thin you're so thin okay what happens is automatically the this human being gets an interpretation oh i am not looking that good i am i am extremely thin okay it is acquired it is learned it is subjective it is dynamic let me tell you that was something beautiful about king to talk like that okay because she believed body image is not something which is same it is dynamic it keeps changing a, a girl who felt that she, her, uh, her hair is not so lustrous maybe when she is in her teenage maybe highly satisfied with her hair when she is in a middle age why because maybe it is due to experiences it is due to the community where she belongs okay so it keeps on changing it is dynamic as a person is redefining self and king indicated that body image includes two things number one the way one perceives one's body i'm sorry one spelling is o n e apostrophe s one perceives one's body and also others reaction to one's appearance so two things are there in body image one is how i perceive about myself that is my body image number two it also depends on how others perceive about my appearance so this is what king said so she wants us to be uh, very clear when you approach a patient a nurse should be uh, careful enough to remember that this person has his own body image when i take care of a patient with burns say major burns i should understand that this lady who is lying down here has her own body image which is very subjective which is acquired which may change and it depends on how she perceives and how others perceive to her appearance next is space i know a lot of concepts are there but you should always think like this see even before i interact with somebody king wants me to be very clear that i know about this person i know that there is something called as a personal system 
which means this patient has his own perception his own growth and development his own self his own body image his own space what is space space may be personal space may be subjective it may be situational it depends on the relationships okay it is universally the same it is defined by the physical area known as territory and by the behavior of those who occupy it it is influenced by culture it's very simple okay space is subjective uh, one patient may be comfortable with a nurse starting from the orientation phase starting from the first time she interacts with the nurse this patient is highly comfortable okay maybe her territory is like that maybe she is a very extrovert okay and uh, it is subjective whereas another patient is very shy and uh, it takes time for her to establish a relationship okay so it is subjective it is personal it depends on the relationships in a situation some of them are very comfortable in their territory to share with the healthcare workers there are some like this okay some of them it takes time to establish the relationship all of us we have the same space but and that physical space what we occupy maybe the room of a patient the bed and the unit of a patient that is called as territory and it is influenced by culture there are certain countries when you give care you are not supposed to touch the patient okay uh, uh, or hug a patient okay especially when he is about to be discharged maybe a way of thanking us maybe a mild hug but that is not considered to be good in certain cultures whereas in certain cultures that is a very ordinary thing it's a very casual way of hug giving a hug to a patient or maybe thanking the patient by a very good handshake or by patting a patient so space again it depends on the culture for some people the space is limited okay for an interpersonal relationship whereas for some people the space is broad you can have a very good territory when you take care of your patient king helps to remind us that king makes us to remind or makes us to remember that every person has their own space it may take time to establish a relationship maybe it is bound by culture maybe it is bound by that person's perception whatsoever okay so that is space and then is time an interval between two events that is experienced differently by each person okay which means this is very simple time is subjective subjective means for some of us attending a class okay maybe like oh my god so fast the class is over okay maybe it is one hour okay but you feel that it's just 10 minutes Uh, very soon the professor has completed her class you may have a feeling like that though she has taken for one hour maybe it's so interesting there are there are certain people like oh my god it's nearly 2 hours and this lady is still taking class okay which means like maybe she has taken only one hour but the perception of time she feels oh my god so again we have to understand that a person who is it is subjective how you perceive about the time is subjective it is experienced differently by each person and it but it is universal and she believed time is irreversible we know that i cannot now go back to my childhood i have very good memories about my childhood but never i can walk back into my childhood now okay it is irreversible it moves from past to future there is a continuous flow of events it is measurable but it is subjective because 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 it is based on perception so how a patient feels about hospitalization the time taken okay where the time taken for discharge the time taken for getting medicines okay the time taken for a doctor to attend a patient all these things perceived by the patient may be different one person may be one patient may be highly grateful because everything you have done so fast and you have made me to get my discharge summary thank you so much there is another patient for the same time interval this patient may shout like anything may be highly irritated yelling at you how much of time you take to uh, give me your discharge summary so the perception of time is subjective the perception is personal it is based on perception time is based on 
perception so that is how uh, you know uh, king helps us to beautifully understand about the various concepts of personal system let's have a look into it and tell the keywords what is perception perception is subjective no two person should feel the same okay should it's not should no two person may not feel the same okay because it is uh, made up of a lot of things it is uh, maybe due to the environment maybe it is due to the genetic makeup okay that is perception next is self what was self awareness awareness of one's being okay awareness of one's own needs i understand every patient has his own self every person has growth and development occurring in the cellular level occurring in the molecular level change in the behavior etc every person has his own body image which is very subjective very personal maybe it is dynamic body image can be dynamic and uh, it also depends on others reaction to his or her appearance king reminds us that every person has his own space his own time space and time are subjective space has a territory time has an interval both are subjective it is influenced by perception space is also influenced by culture so this is what kings wants us to remember even before we go into an interpersonal system did you like it it's something very nice to understand that yeah every patient has his own perception self growth and development body image right space and time now with this understanding let us move on to the next phase interpersonal system okay now what is an interpersonal system very simple when two personal systems comes in contact with each other they become an interpersonal system like a two cups of coffee so far king was teaching us what is within one cup now she is telling us two personal systems are coming who comes in this theory the nurse and the patient two personal systems comes in contact with one another especially when human beings interact with each other it is forming an interpersonal system she made it clear two persons they form a dyad three persons they form a triad and four or more persons they form a group easy no it's very simple interpersonal system okay what are the various concepts in interpersonal system number 1 interaction what is interaction interaction is the observable behavior of two or more persons in mutual presence so what is interaction observable behavior when somebody looks as a third person okay objectively you can find two people it is a behavior maybe a nurse is doing some procedure to the patient maybe she is giving a feeding she has, she assist the patient in feeding maybe it is an oral feeding and she is assisting the patient for it now that is an interaction because if there is an observable behavior between two or more persons both of them are in together in mutual presence interaction is characterized by values mechanism for establishing human relationship it is universally experienced it is influenced by perception interaction how much i talk how much the way i do the way i do certain things to my patient the way my patient is receiving all the care from me that process of interaction is influenced by perception it is interdependent interaction may have verbal or a non verbal communication it may be unidirectional dynamic which means it happens again there is no reversible it is irreversible process it flows it with time it flows it is dynamic and it exists within the boundary of time and space so it's very simple interaction is something like uh, interaction is when two systems come together and when you see some observable behavior within them maybe they are talking maybe the nurse is communicating with the patient maybe the nurse is administering medications or administering feeding checking vitals all those you know that observable behavior what you can see between these two people in their mutual presence characterized or influenced by their values influenced by their culture influenced by their perception taking place you know that is called as interaction okay next is we see communication so the second concept what king said in her interpersonal theory is communication what is communication 
Communication is very simple. Even a first year BSc nursing student will tell what is communication. Exchange of information is called as between persons when you exchange information, you call that as communication. So she said that develops communication helps to build human relations. We agree, right? Only when there is communication, our relationship is maintained, our relationship is developed, and there this communication can be of any method. It can be verbal, it can be non-verbal, it can be face-to-face, -face, it can be an electronic media or even through a written word. She believed that communication can be situational, it can be perceptual, it can be a transactional, trying to bring a change in the behavior, counseling, you know. Counseling is something where you try to bring a change in the behavior of the person who is coming to you transactional irreversible moving forward in time the move the greatest thing what i admire in king's theory is even small small things she has given so much of importance where she said that intrapersonal communication can affect a person's social exchange do you agree with that intrapersonal communication is the communication which occurs within ourselves Okay, certain things what you tell yourself, certain things what you repeat within yourself, that has an influence on how you interact with others. So that is about communication, nothing much. It's very easy to write for exam. It is exchange of information. It can be verbal. It can be nonverbal. It can be situational. It depends on perception. Sometimes it can be transactional trying to bring about a change. Easy, you know, communication. Next is transaction. See, the words what you have to remember is Interaction, communication, transaction. Transaction means what? This is something, it's just not interaction. It is moving one step ahead. What is that? Transaction. A series of exchanges between human beings and the environment that includes observable behavior to reach the goal, to reach the goal of worth to the participants. They are unique. See, uh, when a student is getting an admission in a nursing college or say she is she's starting with her first year of BSc nursing. Now, uh, maybe we have a goal that she has to complete 60 hours of, uh, say, uh, theory in a subject like anatomy. Now, the one class what you see which takes place between the teacher and the student is an interaction. Maybe 60 hours of interaction is necessary to help the student <clears throat> to reach the goal of getting a good mark when she appears for the university examination. That 60 hours of interaction becomes a transaction. What is transaction? A series of exchanges. One procedure what you do for the patient is an interaction. But every day, every shift, you work with the patient, you do things for the patient, you motivate the patient, you find that improvement and the patient gets discharged. There is a, you know, there is a great improvement in the condition of the patient. That thing, what you work every shift, the various things what you do every shift for say one week, that process is called as transaction. I hope it is clear. Interaction is like one thing, what you see. A series of interaction is called as transaction. Because it's not that simply you come and you interact. You have a goal. A series of exchanges of human interaction in order to reach the goal, which is of worth to the participant, is called as transaction. Next is a role. What is a role? Role is a set of expected behavior who occupy an identified position in a social system. Uh, when a nurse is working in a hospital, she has certain expected behaviors. She has to display certain expected behaviors, right? Like, for example, based on the code of ethics, based on her professional conduct, there are various roles which she has to do. That set of expected behaviors is called as role. According to King, nurse's role is interacting with one or more others in which the nurse as a professional is going to use the skill, is going to use the knowledge, going to use the values in order to identify the goals and help a patient to achieve that. That is the role according to King in her theory. So, what is role? According for a nurse, the role is to interact with many patients or many others 
Why? In order to use her knowledge, skills and values for what? To identify goals and to help patients to attain that goals. So that is called as a role according to King in her theory of interpersonal or interpersonal system. So that is role. So I, I understand that a nurse has various roles to play. When I get into an interpersonal system, when I come, you know, when I encounter a patient while giving care, I have a set of roles where I should be aware of using my knowledge, using my skill, helping the patient to identify the needs, set a goal and help the patient to achieve that goal. So that role should be remembered by a nurse while we are studying interpersonal system. Next is stress. What is stress? Stress is universal. All of us agree. All of us, we do have certain periods of stress. But the stress is dynamic. It is not the same. Morning, you may be highly stressed. By evening, you're free. Okay, you don't have any stress. Or maybe the vice versa. So it is universal. It is dynamic. Because why the stress is like this? Because of continuous exchange with the environment okay the same thing was told by even uh, roger Malta e. roger also said that stress is there okay betty newman said stress is there why because we are all open systems and we are interacting with the environment say morning someone shouted at me and i feel highly stressed up by afternoon my friend gave me a very good company and she said and uh, what to say she helped me to look at the positive things of it and you know that exchange with my friend helped me to reduce my stress so it is a series of exchanges with the environment which makes us to become stressed and it is dynamic intensity of a stress varies we all agree with that it is individual it is personal it is subjective so we should understand that why one patient is anxious one patient is calm because it is subjective stress is subjective so what is the role of a nurse to help the patient through environmental interaction to keep equilibrium to support growth and development and activity. So my role when I interact with the patient is to help the patient to reach equilibrium in order to support growth and development and activity. So I understand in interpersonal system, we have a lot of concepts. Okay, So we do have a lot of concepts like starting from interaction. What is interaction? Observable behavior. That is interaction. Communication. Verbal non-verbal transaction series of exchanges okay there is a lot of interactions in order to attain a goal then what was the previous point we just studied role so i understand that when i interact when i have transaction i have a role to play what is that role to use my knowledge to use my skill to use my values to help the patient to identify the goal and to help the patient to reach that goal and I understand that every patient may have his own level of stress. Intensity of stress may vary, but it is dynamic. Okay. And so my role is when the patient comes to me, the patient, when I am in the environment, I should help the patient to seek equilibrium, to help to reach that position of equilibrium, whereby that stress is reduced now we move on to the last part social system so i hope personal system is clear interpersonal system is clear so please understand personal system king takes us through a beautiful journey where she wants us to understand this is what is going on within the patient this is what like the patient has his own uh, perception growth and development patient has his own territory time etc okay she takes us through the journey of interpersonal system where she is telling us there should be interaction communication transaction you have a role to play and understand that the stress level varies for each patient now she takes us to the last system social system when interpersonal systems join together 
they form a larger system called as social system example is maybe the hospital setup where we are working maybe the religious group to which a patient belongs maybe it is uh, the group of nursing professionals alone so when this interpersonal system is going to form a larger group it becomes a social system so in the social system like it is like having a lot of cups okay you are only one among that cup so maybe this patient is one among the person in a particular community one among a person in a big family okay so this person is related to family this person is related to his workplace this person is related to his religious community that is social system so in the social system king wants us to know that there are certain roles behaviors and practices defined by the system so that particular system to which my patient belongs if he is coming from a particular family that family has established its own reasons why this person should what role what should be the behavior what are the accepted practices within a family in order to create methods to maintain the practice and rules of the system so we know all of us in our own group in our own institution in our own hospital we have our own roles to play we have our own behavior to display so this person who is sitting in front of me belongs to a social system so under that king has put up various concepts let us quickly look into it number one is organization organization is the environment in which the system exists the influences and this influences the availability of resources both human and material maybe it is family member maybe it is administration maybe even if it is technology to reach the goals of the organization so from which group this patient has come maybe this person has come from a very uh, selected part of a community so maybe the environment in which the system is existing is called as organization so there is a social system both for the patient as well as for the nurse the patient also belongs to one organization the nurse also belongs to one organization okay that is the environment is organization number two kings remind us king reminds us about authority authority is associated with position in which the position holder is distributing the rewards and sanctions it can be held by professionals through their competence in using special knowledge and skills see authority is we should understand when i enter into an interpersonal system okay when i am interacting with a patient there are certain authorities given for a registered nurse there are certain authorities given for an academician authority how do you exercise that authority through your competence in giving care to the patient demonstration of your skill okay the way you do a dressing the way you do a particular thing that is authority so even within a social system the way you carry out certain things may be due to the position of a registered nurse may be due to the position of an academician you have how do you exercise your authority through competence that is what king spelled out it can be held by professionals through their competence in using special knowledge and special skills it is also associated with power so i understand a person belonging to a social system will have an organization may it can be family it can be the institution where i work this person can display authority especially a nursing professional displays authority through her competence while giving nursing care number 3 is power what is power power is universal power is situational what is situational power when you are in a particular authority when you are given a uh, you, when you are given a particular position you have to display your power that is situational and it is necessary in an organization why do you need power to avoid confusions in the society you have to drive left okay why to avoid confusions in traffic same way there are certain things which should be done like that and that who says that it is exercised by power so in a social system there is something called as power in order to reduce the confusions and it has a direct association with authority and decision making so i understand that maybe this person who is coming uh if we is a patient in front of me is belonging to a particular social system maybe he belongs he has his own authority he may be having his own power 
even i have my own authority even i have my own power to do certain things because it is situational when i work as a registered nurse i have certain powers it is not only authority to take a decision okay it may be situational because i work as a nursing supervisor etc so that is power next is decision making decision making is necessary to provide order we need to make decisions so decision making is always goal directed and it is a process through which choices related to goals are made so decision making is like you know both of us together that is the patient and the nurse together in a social system we are trying to sort out things and we are trying to take up certain decisions okay this is only possible by me because maybe my uh, caregivers will not be there tomorrow so i may not be able to ambulate tomorrow okay so maybe or i may not be able to do certain things tomorrow when a patient is telling like that the nurse is going to adjust her goals based on the patient's availability so that is decision making which is going to be mutual whether to do this or whether not to do it what about diet lot of things which are involved in certain activities is decision making so decision making here is a process through which choices related to goals are made what intervention can we do to attain the goal i discuss it with the patient in within my social system what is possible from my i will tell whatever is possible by the patient the patient will tell we agree we select a decision to attain the goal next is status whenever we work in a social system we have a status what is status relationship of one's place in a group to others in the group okay it is accompanied by advantages accountability and requirements so uh king uh, reminds us that when we are in a social system we will have all these things even in a family there is the family is an organization in a family there are people who are authoritative maybe they are the parents there are people with power maybe it is the head of the family has certain powers and even the other people we have our own power power is there okay we have our own decision making within an organization the family will have as a setup they will give their ideas in taking up a decision there is a status within a family who is the main person who is the next person right we don't have such a formal system in a family but still we have certain status if someone says this is it maybe we'll all agree with that because it is the status of one's place in a group to others so social system actually helps us to understand that a patient may not be willing to undergo maybe certain procedures immediately maybe due to the decisions from the family it can be due to the authoritative power of someone in the family so we have to understand that patient all together that this patient is coming from a social system please understand it's not only family it can be a religious group it can also be the place where a patient, uh, this patient is working okay so this person belongs to a social system where there are people with authority there is a way organization there is a role to play there is a uh, there are people to make decisions there is a status within the family so who is this patient in that organization does he has authority does he have authority to take up decisions or should he consult with his family members same thing for the nurse i work in an organization i have certain authorities i have certain powers i have my own status and i have certain areas where i can help in the decision making of a patient i don't know if you can appreciate the beauty in king's theory because king has made it very clear that any interpersonal relationship okay the, the it is an interactional theory okay it is an interpersonal theory let me tell you peplos was an interpersonal theory kings also comes under interaction theories okay so even before you go into interaction king is making things very clear by laying things on a table saying that this particular patient whom you are going to deal today he has his own personal system 
there are certain things which you should be careful when you are interacting with this patient interpersonal system please do understand that this patient belongs to a social system where there is a certain way of organization there is a authority there are certain powers decision making and status so once you understand this it will be very easy to form a transaction interaction and help the patient to attain the goal within this system so i hope this video is clear it's a i have just taken only the concepts in king's theory discussing it under personal interpersonal social personal within oneself uh, each one of us we have our own perception body image growth and development space and time when we enter into an interpersonal system we have interaction there will be communication there should be transaction for the goal to be attained right and there should be there will be a role to play by the nurse and try to understand that the stress will be there for the patient which may be different from one person to another social system organization authority power decision making status so many things are there so i sincerely pray and hope that this small video will be useful to all of you who are watching this especially to nursing students again let me tell you this theory is something very important from an exam point of view so try to appreciate why the theorist has written like that try to understand that concepts and then study so once you study though it appears a little bit difficult it is actually a very easy and a very interesting theory so we have covered a major portion what is left out is the real theory of goal attainment which i will be discussing in the my next video then the assumptions propositions meta paradigm and nursing process application so thank you all for your great support and encouragement thank you